Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps of how you can create your monthly, quarterly or annual sales goals in pipe drive. Now, in my experience, with the clients that we've worked with, we often find that the goals feature in Pipedrive is not being used. A lot of people don't even know it exists. And this is a real shame, as setting up goals in Pipedrive, number one, is a really powerful way for you as a sales manager or the owner of the business to track the performance of your team and hold them accountable. But number two, it actually helps with the adoption of Pipedrive. Sometimes we hear that salespeople are not updating the CRM, they're not progressing deals along the pipeline, and data is getting out of date. But if you set up goals inside Pipedrive, it holds your team accountable and it forces adoption because they have to update Pipedrive and keep their deals up to date. Otherwise, it looks like they're not doing anything and they're not going to achieve their goals. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you'd like to get some one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing Pipedrive, maybe automating more of your sales process, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Pipedrive support options. To create your first goal in Pipedrive, head on over to the Insights tab from the left-hand navigation. And then on one of your dashboards, click the green plus button and you can create a new goal. Now, there are different types of goals that you can set up. We have deal-based goals. This allows you to track the volume of deals being added, progressed, or won throughout your sales process. So an example with this, of this would be, let's say you have somebody on your team, they're doing prospecting. You could have a goal to have them create, let's say, 20 new deals per month because they are qualifying leads and we want them to create a certain number per month. We also have progression goals. For example, maybe you have somebody on your team who's booking calls, like setters who are booking calls for closers. You might have a progress goal where they have to move a certain volume of deals into a uh, meeting booked stage. And then we have deal one goals. This would be to track the volume or the value of deals that the team have won. So typical revenue based goal. Then we have activity-based goals, which are useful for tracking the volume of activities being created or completed. An example of this would be, maybe you have somebody on the team that needs to send a certain number of quotes per month and you're tracking that using activities. And finally, you have forecast-based goals. This allows you to see your cumulative sales alongside your forecasted revenue. So you can see what your expected revenue is gonna be and how that's helping you make progress towards your goal. So let's go through those in a bit more detail. And I'm going to start by creating a classic sales goal. Let's track the volume or value of deals one. Now, when you create your goal, you can decide whether to make this a company goal, in which case all the users in your Pipedrive account, all of their deals are going to count towards the company goal. If you're on the professional plan, you have the ability to set up teams. And I can then say, right, I can have an individual goal for each team of users in my account, or at the more, most granular level, I can have user-based goals. So I can assign goals to individual salespeople. And so I can say, Paul, in this case, has to achieve a certain value or volume of sales per month or quarter or year. So for now, let's just do, uh, just do a company goal. And I can filter this to a specific pipeline if I want to. For example, maybe I'm only going to count sales or deals one on the sales pipeline. But if I want to, I could track all pipelines. I can then choose the frequency of my goal. So is this a monthly, weekly, uh, quarterly, or yearly goal? So I'm gonna stick with monthly for now. I think that's probably most common. I can then set the goal duration. So when does this goal start? I think start of the year, 1st of January works well. And we're gonna run this through to the end of the year um, because probably next year I'll set up a new goal. So we'll say that this is the goal um, for this year. I can then specify how I'm gonna track uh, progress towards this goal. So I can either put in the value, so maybe I need to achieve $50,000 worth of sales or deals one per month, or I can do a count. Maybe I want to close 20 deals per month. I think most people are going to want to track value because it's the value that's kind of most interesting. Uh, now I can just leave it at that. Um, so I'm going to have this goal would be I have to achieve $50,000 of deals one per month. But I could choose to specify individual periods if I want to. Maybe my business is uh, seasonal. Maybe start of the year for me, everyone wants help with pipe drive in January. I could have a higher goal in January. 
and then February, maybe a little lower. And so I could have custom goals for each month to maybe account for any seasonal change uh, in my business. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as a simple $50,000 sales target and I'll click save. So here's what the goal page looks like once you've created it. As you can see, along the x-axis here, we can see the value of my monthly sales target. So for me, just $50,000 a month, you can see represented by this goal line. And because it's January night right now, we can see we've started to make some progress already. Uh, we've won $9,200 worth of deals. And so we have 40,800 left uh, in terms of sales we need to generate to reach our goal for January. So how does this get updated? Well, if I go to one of my deals, you can see I've got a value on this deal. Once I mark this as one, I've now closed the deal, I've won it. And so this value here, this is gonna be recorded as revenue on today's date, the 16th of January. And if I go back to my report and just refresh the page, we will now see the updated progress towards this goal. So there we go. We can see we've now achieved 11.2 thousand and we have 38.8 left to go. If I need to edit anything about my goal, I can click up here and I can edit those uh, values that we looked at before. Or if I'm happy, I can give this goal a name. So let's just say company sales target 2024, and I can add it to one of my dashboards. So now if I go back to my sales dashboard, there we go, I can see how I'm tracking towards this company sales target this year. So that's an example of setting up a typical sales revenue-based target for your company, but I would suggest doing this for the teams or even the individual salespeople or users in your account. As I mentioned in the intro, this is one of the best ways to increase accountability and really force adoption of your team so your team are updating pipe drives so they can be tracking their progress towards their goals. Now let's have a look at an activity-based goal. So just like I did before, I'm gonna click the plus button and create a new goal. And now I'm gonna to come to activity and let's do activities completed. Similar to before, we can set up this activity goal for the entire company, team, or an individual user. So I'm gonna do a user for this example. And let's say that I'm gonna create this goal for myself. And for the activity type, I can choose which types of activities do I want to track so that when Paul, me in this case, when I complete these activities, they count as progress towards my goal. So let's just say I've got this demo call activity type and I've customized these activity types in my company settings. Again, I can specify a specific pipeline if I want, but for, for demo calls, I'm gonna leave this as uh, demo calls completed on any pipeline. Again, I can choose my frequency. I'm gonna stick with monthly. Let's go from the start to the end of the year. And then finally, I can choose my value. So I'm gonna try and complete, let's just say 10 demo calls per month. Whoops, 10, there we go. And again, I can set individual targets for each month, but I'm gonna keep it simple for now. And so let's click save and see what it looks like. Similar to before, you can see my goal with the goal line along the top. So I've got 10 activities or demo calls to complete per month. I can see for the month of January, I've completed two and I have eight to go. And so let's show you how I can update my progress towards this goal if I go to one of my deals. And you can see here, I've got this demo call activity that's scheduled. And you can see I'm using the demo call activity type. Now, when I complete my call, I finish the demo, I can mark this activity as done. So I've now recorded the fact that we've done that demo. And again, this is why goals are so powerful is it forces adoption. The salespeople have to log their activities like I've done there. And now if I reload this goal page, we should see that goal progress increase. There we go. So I've now completed three activities and I can um, track my progress each month. Activity-based goals are great for tracking things like the volume of calls or demos complete, quotes or contracts, proposals sent per month, or even things like email follow-ups done. And this is really in line with Pipedrive's philosophy, which is that you can't control outcomes, you can only control your activity and what you do. So creating activity-based goals is a great way of making it very clear to your team, this is the minimum amount of follow-up that we require you to do per month so that we can hit our sales targets. Now let's do one more together. Let's have a look at a revenue forecast goal. 
Now, revenue forecast goals are similar to the deal one goal, but it's presenting the information in a slightly different way where it helps you to understand how you're tracking towards your overall goal, goal for the year, considering that you might over or underperform each month. So to give you an example, let's set up a very similar goal to what we had before. So it's gonna be a company goal on the sales pipeline. I'm gonna start from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And we're gonna do the same $50,000 goal or, or re revenue goal per month and click save. Now, the way this is different is instead of seeing the $50,000 of sales we need to achieve per month, my goal line shows the cumulative um, revenue we should be hitting each month. So in January at the start of the year, I need to hit 50,000 in sales. In February, it's another 50. So we should be at 100 by the end of February and so on. By the end of March, we should be at 150, 200, and it keeps going up. So this is quite nice because it means if you have a really good month, let's say in January, you actually do $60,000 in sales, so you overachieve. And then in February, you only do 40,000 in sales. You've actually still hit 100 in total by the end of February. So you're still tracking towards your overall goal for the year. The other useful thing I can do with this goal is I can track the value of any forecasted revenue of deals I'm expecting to win. For example, you can see right now where it says open for January and February, we've got $0 of forecasted revenue. But if I go to one of my deals, you see I've got this deal worth $20,000. Now, when I'm relatively confident that I'm gonna close this deal, I can add an expected close date. So I can say, I think we're gonna win this in February, maybe mid-February, because they've given me a verbal go ahead, they're just getting the final sign off, but we should get this closed in February. Now, the goal is not gonna track the total value. It's only gonna track the weighted value of this deal. Now, that weighted value is calculated based on the probabilities that I've set in my pipeline settings, which we can see here. And if you want to learn more about this, check out the video that I've linked here on how to set up your pipeline. So we've got the probabilities uh, based on the deal stage, or if I'm really confident this is gonna go ahead, I could actually say this is 100% likely to happen. I mean, it's probably not 100, but I could put in my own custom probability. That way, the full $20,000 in this case is gonna to count towards my goal. So if I refresh my report, we should now be able to see that for February, I've got $20,000 of open deals that are forecasted to be won next month. And this allows me to take into account deals that are in progress right now that we're expecting to win. How are they going to help us to meet or hopefully exceed our goals? So that is a look at how to set up your sales goals in Pipedrive. As I said, I find often the clients we work with aren't using this feature and it's a real missed opportunity because it's a great way of Pipedrive being able to help you as a sales manager or business owner track your team's performance and hold your team more accountable. If you need any help with optimizing or setting up your goals in Pipedrive, click the link in the description below to learn more about my services. Feel free to leave me a comment. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.